How's it going, everybody? Rob Brad here today, and we are back with our Ottawa Senators franchise mode. And we are in probably what is the second to last, maybe last season, depending on how things go. Uh, and I'm very excited to get into it, guys. We haven't, I mean, our team is still very, very good. We don't have those elite superstars, you know, on the front end. Like, Worrell seems like he doesn't want to grow much higher than an 88. He's a power forward who scores a boatload of goals. Uh, Stutzla, pretty much capping out right there at the 90. He's got that high elite, but he's not really eclipsing that. We move Forsberg up to that first line because he is, you know, a goal scorer. He's got 90 wrist shot accuracy. Uh, we need more goal scoring on that first line. Colin White might, I mean, he might be a guy worth uh, moving up to the first line. But I kind of like the chemistry there on the second line. Kerfoot and Kachuk round out that second line with Pelletier, Brown and Yolan in, Formanton, Lapierre and Williams. Um, and then Shabbat Brandstrom is our top defensive pairing. So obviously defense is not going to be an issue as far as getting points. Um, Hayden Fleury, who we went after and signed this offseason, fits the scheme uh, very, very well. We've got a plus three, but we're not moving Shabbat down. Him with Ryan Ellis. He'll allow Ryan Ellis to do his thing going forward. We know he's very good. And then Reese Chichu and Jeremy Roy. I mean, Roy here stepped in last season, and he stepped in very nicely. Uh, 12 points plus nine in the 60 games he played since letting Jamie Drysdale go. Take a look at the special teams. we got Forsberg, Stutzlow, Worrell, Brandstrom, Shabbat. I'd like to move, I think, I'll leave Shabbat up there. Uh, Brandstrom is not going to grow anymore. We'll drop Hayden Flurry off of that power play. We'll move, I think, Colin White up. Uh, and then Pelletier. Who else do we want to get on this, uh, on this second power play unit? I think I'll put... Pelletier is already on it. Kachuk. Forsberg is already on there. Yeah, so, uh, Brady Kachuk is medium top six. He, his potential dropped, which is not what you want to see. But we'll put him there. Um, White, not Flurry. Um... So we got Forsberg, Stutzla, Worrell, Kachuk. I guess Kerfoot's the one I'm missing, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like Kerfoot is the one guy that is missing off that top, uh, 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 uh off the top players there. Uh, so Hayden Flurry's gonna drop for Alex Kerfoot. He's a playmaker. Does he fit? Yes, he does. Does he fit better? He fits better than Shabbat. He fits better than Forsberg. But I'm, I want Forsberg to get a lot of points there, guys. I want him to be up there, um, scoring goals for us. I know he's a two-way forward, but. I like the way the second line is looking, uh, second power play anyway. On the penalty kill, we got White and LaPierre, Brown and Yolanin, Shabbat Ellis, Reese Chichu, and Eric Brandstrom. I'm very happy with that. Uh, if we move Brandstrom up, uh, why not? We'll move Brandstrom up. He's a good uh, partner for, for Shabbat. They're partners in just about everything. So why not keep it there um, as, as partners on the penalty kill? So... We're going to go ahead and get up to our usual January 1st, get halfway through the season, see thing, how things are going. You guys can let me know what I need, um, you know, to target maybe at January 1st, who we should give an extension to, and just who is going to uh, come in at the trade deadline maybe. So let's go ahead and just go the first month for now. Let's just go through the month of October uh, and just see how the team uh, performs uh, I think we just absolutely, yeah, we walloped the Sabres there in preseason. But it's not good to see uh, uh, us go three and four in preseason. But our, we do win our first three, four regular season. We win our first five, six, seven regular season games. Uh, we win our first eight, first nine. Can we make it a 10-game winning streak? Oh, we can't start the season on a 10-game winning streak. But we are starting off very hot. The St. Louis Blues apparently are our kryptonite. Losing it over overtime to the Ducks stings, but hey, we at least got a point. Things are looking good. They're rolling. I know we probably will come back down to earth a bit here in uh, November, but um, you know what? I'm going to just let it ride. I'm not going to change anything, check anything. We'll see. Um, overtime loss there to the Lightning, which is not good. We want to take all the points off the Lightning and Leafs that we can throughout the season. There we go. There's two points away from the Leafs, or Lightning, excuse me. We haven't played the Leafs yet, have we? We have not played the Toronto Maple Leafs yet. And so far, things are good at 16-6-4, but with this damn division, uh, our 36 points is only good enough for second. We'd be leading uh, every other division and only one point behind the Caps. Um, yeah, we're three points behind the Maple Leafs. We haven't played them yet, and Philip Forsberg leads the team in points. Now, this is exactly what I wanted to see. This is where we wanted to get to. Worrell with 27 and Stutzla with 27. Kachuk there with 24. So I want to—I really wish Kachuk would have grown a bit. He's now capped out at 86, which kind of sucks. Um, Worrell, hopefully, and Stutzla will get a little bit of a jump. Colin White there uh, at 23, and that rounds out the 20-point getters. But you can see Kerfoot here doing well. Brandstrom doing well as well. Plus 14 for him. Pelletier, plus 2, 15 points. 
Ryan Ellis is a plus five with 13 points. See, that's the thing. That's what I want to see. Brandstrom and Ellis are like my offensive defenseman on the first and second pairing. Like I said, I keep saying it. Ellis is not an offensive defenseman, but he certainly simulates what like one. He's got the stats for one. Uh, and you just need to let him do his thing. Yolan in on the third line. Shabbat's a plus 19. I'm not concerned about his points. Uh, Reese Chichu with 10. Logan Brown with 10. LaPierre with 8. Uh, Hayden Fleury with 16 penalty minutes, but he's got 8 points and plus 4. So penalty minutes. Uh, I mean, Shabbat is, is undisciplined, it seems. But uh, Josh Williams has got 6 points. He's only a plus 1. Formington. Uh, Jeremy Roy here with 5 points and is a plus 5 and has taken no penalties. So that's what we want to see. And in goal, Cutler having a very good season. Now, I, I say Cutler's having a good season, but Gibson's having a really, really good season with his 2.67 goal against average. I know 9.07 is not ridiculously good, but it is still very quality. So 9.07 and a 2.67. John Gibson, who many of you have asked for me to move on from, I mean, I can't really complain about this, can I? 9.10 and a 2.6 goal against average, that's elite. That's probably top 10 in the league every year, and you got to look at it that way. Uh, I don't know why I'm going into awards, um, but right now things are looking okay. You know what I do want to check? I want to check if Jamie Drysdale is still on the Leafs and if he's still uh, uh, performing well. I did not want to go there. Uh, if he's still performing well on the Leafs, because that's something that, um, you know, I, I don't want to live to regret is to make the Leafs even better. Uh, if we take a look at their defenseman, Jamie Drysdale has nine points and is a plus 11. It looks like he's playing with Lilligren. if I had to take a wild guess. No, no, he's not. He's playing with Oscar Clefbaum, without a doubt. He's for sure playing with Oscar Clefbaum. They're not using him very much, but they're using him well. He's got, you know, in 17 minutes, he's doing doing pr pretty darn good. Uh, their goalies, Riddich. Uh, okay, so their goalies are a little bit, you know, suspect. Obviously, they've got... Uh, Landon McCammon here, who's just absolutely insane. I mean, guys, it's ridiculous. 99 wrist shot, 96 offense awareness, 97 passing, 96 defensive awareness. I don't care if, I mean, he gets up to speed quick, but he can't, you know, go very fast. He's just got the perfect, you know, stat distributions. If you could ask for a, a creative player to have, you know, average in certain areas, but, you know, pick a couple to have really good stats, he's probably what you would pick and what you would assume, um, uh, would be would be the player you would want. Anyway, I want to do I do want to check out the contracts here, guys, um, and see who is expiring. Brandstrom, Forsberg, Kerfoot, Ellis, McMichael. McMichael, I don't think is even playing. Lapierre is is playing on the fourth line there. Yep. Uh, but McMichael, I believe I have scratched. Yeah, I didn't like the way he's played in the past, but he's got ridiculous awareness. Uh, he was good in Belleville. He was not good in his 27 games that we gave him. Uh, uh, last season, but he is just scratched for now. Roy is another good player. So we got a lot of like good players expiring and I need to know guys, should I bring them back? Uh, I don't plan on bringing Gibson back. I do plan on bringing uh, Cutler back. Uh, so we'll, oh my, we'll give him the two years at 2.1. Uh, 2 yeah, I'm not going to haggle over that. Two years at 2.1 is fine with me. String him on a little bit. I don't know how much longer we're going to be here in Ottawa before you know, we potentially get fired, so, uh, but Brandstrom and Forsberg, Brandstrom is definitely one that I want to bring back, but he wants a ton of money, so we have how much in extension dollars? 30 million, so we have a lot, but there is a lot of shakeup and turnover that could happen this season. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get rid of anybody at the deadline, you know, expiring deals, this is like the perfect sell-off opportunity, but we're clearly not selling off. We will look to buy in uh, and find out an area to improve. I do want to see, you know what, I'll check it after uh, after we get to the, you know, J January 1st. Um, but right now, things are looking good. I know we kind of cooled off here in this two-week stretch. Um, hopefully, we pick it up here uh, December of 2026. That is super far in the future. Anyway, we do. Gregory Cutler did re decide to renew his contract. So we now have a starting goaltender next season for $2.1 million, who's going to be pretty quality. Losing to the Lightning outright not good. It's definitely not good because, um, you know, they just picked up two points on us and pulled away by two points. Um, but we are going to end the month with an overtime win against Columbus and still five points behind those freaking Tampa Bay Lightning. I kind of want to see um, player search. I want to see who's on an expiring deal who maybe I could go after early. You know, waiting until the deadline gives you 20 games to pick up points. Coming now... We got 40 games. We still got half the season to pick up points if we go after somebody now. Um, just kind of want to look for a, a goal-scoring forward, I think. I know we got goal scorers, 
but we need a goal scoring forward. So, um, McDavid is expiring. That'd be, uh, no, he's not. What? What? Did it change everything when I went, when I went to forward? Did it change contract? Yeah, I think it did. Um, I was like, McDavid's expiring. Uh, Sweetland expiring, but it was so, so valuable. Kucherov is expiring and maybe, oh, they extended him. Ellie Tolvin in here. We said he doesn't fit the scheme, right? Oh, he would fit the top six forward lines. He would fit the top six forward lines. I think he just signed with, uh, with, uh, <clears throat> oh, who are they? They are the Washington Capitals. Oh my God. Uh, Andrei Svechnikov uh, has got an extension. Dylan Strom doesn't, but he's a playmaker. He fits, wow, he fits pretty much everywhere. But Ellie Tolvanen, the sniper. I wish his wrist shot accuracy was better, but he is banging home some goals this year. A really good season for him there uh, in his first season there in Washington. 20 minutes a night, clearly playing with better players. His shooting percentage is at a career high. I don't know. In the sim, he's only really put in 20 goals. Now, I could go after him, but I don't want to get burned by that. Uh, Zadina is a two-way forward. He's got ridiculous passing. Lafreniere, uh, is a playmaker, clearly, but, yeah, uh, he's not got quite the, uh, numbers that I want to see there. Casey Middlestad, I know. Philip Forsberg's on our team. Uh, um, <laughs> Matthew Phillips here, the playmaker, 85. Atu Rati, the two-way forward, 81. Rashad Accuracy, not the goal scorer I want to see. Jonathan Druin with a sniper of an 89. He's putting in 17 goals. I mean, he's clearly on pace to sur uh, surpass what he did last season. Um, maybe we just, you know, want to go after a guy like, oh, uh, Nico. Oh, it's Nico Hiche. Uh, oh, God, why are we all the way back at the top? Um, heroes. I was going to say heroes. Uh, no, he's, he's definitely not good enough. Robertson, that's from the Leafs. I don't want to give them anything that might come back to bite me. Brendan Gallagher here at 86 with his 90. Rishad, he's already got 30 goals in 39 games. For the Montreal Canadiens, oh, I would love to go after a guy like Brandon Gallagher, uh, trade for him. I wonder what it would take to get Brandon Gallagher. They don't want to give him up. They are currently 20-16-3. Um, I would give away my first-round draft pick to get him. Uh, we're going to need to give up another player. Skaters matching the block. Um, action here? We, we did trade for action. Christian Action is the guy we got from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, in exchange for Jamie Drysdale, I'm pretty sure. Gerard here. Harold Gerard, the power forward, looks really actually quite good. I don't know why I'm uh, not bringing... How's he doing in the minors? He is doing okay in the minors. I'm, I might look to call this guy up. There's so much talent on this team. Yolanin, um is having a good season. I feel like I can improve on him and moving him for Brendan Gallagher uh, would be the right decision, I think. I'm going to see if I can get them to retain like half a million on his salary too. Because uh, then we would be able to make this deal go through. A first in Yolan in for Brennan Gallagher, uh, who fits the third line. That's the that's the problem. How, how, how? Yeah, the third line and first line aren't exactly comparable. He is a two-way forward. Oh, do I do the deal? He's scoring at a massive clip though, right? Like his shooting percentage is at 20%. 20% is quite a lot. Let's head to Washington. Um, and Washington is a conservative buyer. They're 26, uh, 11, and 1. So we want to go to left wingers. Tolvin in. We would be over the league maximum salary cap. We got to clear off a little bit more cap space. Uh, all skaters, let's sort by cap. See if am I overpaying anybody is the question. Uh, Kerfoot maybe? Ellis maybe? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm overpaying for anybody. I think I'd like to get... I'll oh, give him Formanton, too. I know Foreman's, Formanton's a sniper. They'd have more than 45 skaters in the organization. Skaters matching the block. Who do they want to get rid of? These guys. Okay, I will take on... Uh, just some throw-in value. Let's go. Who's who's the least valuable? Acker here. I'll take Acker. Uh, we would be over the league maximum salary cap. By 1 million? Yikes. Um, I'm probably not going to get them to retain... a. Three quarters. Ooh, you know what? Let's let's try and see what they would want for Tolvanen. Because I'm I'm gonna at least look. I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but I'm at least gonna look here. And we are we are at January first. We're only two games away from halfway through the season. But if we find a trade for Tolvanen, could really really spark something here. I know Tolvanen. He could shoot at an even better clip. I know I know he can. Um, there's Tolvanen. Let's see. No trades found. I I figured they were not gonna have any trades found. Gabriel Landeskog's an interesting option with three years left at that $4 million. He's got a good uh, shooting stat, but 
I don't know. Uh, a guy like, like again, like a guy like Brandon Gallagher uh, would be really, really good. You know what I want to do? I'm gonna see. I'm gonna do the player search again. We're gonna try and find expiring contracts with wrist shot accuracy over 90. Um, with zero to one uh, years left. Uh, select rating. Can we get wrist shot accuracy in here, please? Oh, it's alphabetic, and I totally went the wrong way. Wrist shot accuracy rating minimum of a 90. So there are 33 players who've got 90 wrist shot accuracy that are are expiring. Jeff Skinner fits the fourth forward line. Is his contract? Yeah, he's still on that massively horrible contract. He's a good player though. He's really cheap, um, but definitely not somebody I want to get for the first line. I said, did I just say cheap? Guys, I think I'm losing it. I meant really not cheap, but here's Brad Marchand, the two-way forward with 94 wrist shot accuracy. Do I mean, he's got no physical or skating. He's scratched for the Detroit Red Wings. He's a cheap punt, I guess. Uh, Vyacheslav Nesterov has got the 92 wrist shot accuracy. Guys, I'm really intrigued by the, uh, by the Brad Marchand idea. He potentially fits forward line three, and if, if he does, that's fine. He's an 81 only. Um, I mean, his defensive category is not great, but it's not going to cost us all that much to get him. Uh, we, we would, we would, oh, this is, whoo, um, skaters matching the block. Who do you guys want? Uh, I, I am willing to get rid of Yolen in here. Um, I, I just am. And then we can potentially... Uh, get somebody else out of the deal here. Draft picks. Do they want to give up some picks? A third and a fourth? I think I'm going to do this. Yolanin, uh, Yolanin's only playing on that third line. I know that third line's okay. He's doing all right. He's, he, he, I think he's overrated, uh, for what he really is. So I'm going to go ahead and do this deal. Um, obviously, I'm going to do it when it works. It's isn't sufficient at all. Uh, let's just throw the fourth, fifth, and, yeah, throw that in there. Rejected, not sufficient. Let's get this deal. Uh, sweeten the value just a touch. Marshan and a fourth for Yolanin. Let's do it. He's got anxiety with his new team. Brad Marshan is now a um, now a member of the Ottawa Senators, which is weird. Uh, action here, the two way forward. I'm gonna call him up and um, I think I might send somebody else down. We know that Mc, uh, we're gonna send Formanton down, uh, and I think we're gonna send. McMichael down just so he gets some playing time confirm their actions in the NHL now Christian action uh, Let's unfilled here. We got Brad Marchand the two-way forward substituting all lines Move him up to that first line. We're gonna move Kerfoot down to that third line and then unfilled here We're gonna get our right winger Christian action substituting all lines. Where does he fit? Uh, he fits best on the fourth line, which is kind of unfortunate for him, but he can play both left and right uh, Marshan fits the second line like really freaking well and the third line really well But I'm gonna put him on the first line. He's got the stats with the passing Offensive awareness is still pretty good. His wrist shot accuracy is insane. I'm gonna Give him a chance here. We might go another month here just because I want to see how this trade is going to play out uh, Power play is looking like that. Yeah, maybe I'll put him on the power play too. I actually no. I think I'm gonna leave things as it is on the power play Keep him on the first line there. Uh, we're going to go best lines in the AHL. There's a lot of talent. Guys, we got 81s on the third line in the AHL. Like, it's it's a very, very talented roster here. Um, we are bringing in Marchan. He may be a little bit expensive. He may not look good from an overall standpoint, but I like the way his individual numbers look. So we are going to go another month here in this episode. Get up to February 1st. You guys let me know if I made a mistake. We still got plenty of time to make moves. Um, and we still we can always bench Marchand or, or bury him in the minors so we can save some cap there too. So it's not the end of the world. I mean, he, he wasn't complaining about his playing time or in Detroit, so he's clearly fine not playing a single minute. Uh, hopefully this month goes really, really well for us. A 2 nothing win there. You got to think Marchand's defensive uh, attributes helping us out there. Uh, Clearly joking, but uh, so far so good. We lose to Tampa, which is a terrible, terrible thing to do. I keep saying it. Um, a win there, that's beautiful. And then against the Flyers, we win as well. Uh, oh my God, all of these trade offers. What is going on? Everybody wants a piece of the Ottawa Senators. But we only lost three games that month. Um, 
uh, how many games? Two, four, six, six. What was it? Six, three, and one? Six, three, and one that month? We are falling behind the lightning uh, big time. Um, but, I, you know, I want to see, is Marshand a detriment to the team? Uh, oh, my goodness. My, when did Josh Williams get a minus eight? Holy goodness. Brad Marshand has three goals, four assists, seven points in ten games, and he's a plus one. Uh, he's got an 82 overall, clearly, because he's happy. Uh, look at that passing. His puck control is insane. His poise is off the charts. Defensive awareness at 85. I mean, you'd like to see his shot blocking and stick checking a little bit better. Uh, he's probably going to have a decent amount of... Uh, yeah, his giveaway to takeaway ratio is not exactly what you want to see. Really not what you want to see. But he's putting up points, seven points uh, in ten games there. Three goals as well. Guys, do I keep him there? Do I move him down to like the third line and let him just contribute there? Uh, because I can always just go back to... I mean, Forsberg's up to an 88. Marshan on the second line would get a plus three. Um, Kurt, he would get a plus three on this fourth or this third line too. Um, so he, he's clearly a guy that I can move up and down the lineup where needed. You know, I could even move Josh Williams up, uh, who probably doesn't deserve to be moved up. Uh, who do we have scratched? We got Frederick Markstrom. I think is going to come in for Josh uh, Williams because he's a minus eight, and I don't, I really don't like that. Uh, but Frederick Markstrom is coming in the power forward. He's got a really good defensive category. Uh, he's going to play with Christian Action and Hendricks Lapierre. Marshan, I think I am going to stop the experiment of Marshan on the first line. I mean, he's got seven points, but he's only a plus one. So that means we are conceding a lot more goals with him on the ice. Obviously, the first line just works. Um, with Forsberg, Stutzla, and Worrell, it's really, really good, guys. Like, look at that. twenty. I mean, everybody's going to be a 20-goal scorer on that first line. So, guys, let me know what you think I should go after. Should Marshan continue to play on the first line? Should he play on the third line? I think I'm going to just concede and say he should be on the third line. Um, what else does this team need? Do we need to go after another top defender? Um, you know, is it the penalty kill? Is it the power play? Is, is it our goals for per game is not high enough? Our goals for per game is the best in the division. Our goals against per game is the best in the division. We're just not getting the results when we, you know, need them. Our power play is the second best in the division. It might as well be the best in the division. Uh, our penalty kill is the second best in the division. Guys, this team is so well-rounded from top to bottom. I don't know what else we need. I mean, taking a look at things here, to f I mean, we looked at the forward points, right? Um... We know that LaPierre and Williams, the fourth line, started to become a big old minus. Uh, that's not good at all. <laughs> uh, Marshan, though, with seven points in ten games, I mean, that's that's a really good pace. I mean, that's what, um, 70 points in 80 games, so that'd be really, really good. How much was uh, Forsberg on pace for? Forsberg leads the team in points, so I guess I should not take him mess with that first line. Uh, defenseman, though... I mean, things are looking great. Shabbat and Ellis are just doing what, what exactly, you know, I want them to do. Uh, Brandstrom, I'd like to see a better plus minus. Roy's dropped to a minus four. Chichu's back to even. So the top four defense, maybe I will go after a defender. Uh, and then in goal, a 255 and a 910 from Gibson. Guys, Gibson is having himself one heck of a season. Really, really good season from him. He's got the uh, attributes you want to see. The rebound control at a 92. Uh, he's, uh, he's got 91 angles, 90 breakaway, 87 stick high. So those are the things you want to see, uh, him do well. Uh, 90 poise means he's going to be more consistent too. Uh, but there we have it guys. That is all the time I have for this episode. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Cause I'm really not sure where to go with this. It looks like the lightning are pulling away and it almost would be better if we just got caught by the Panthers. It really would be better if we just got caught by the Panthers, but we might have to go through the Leafs and Lightning again. Um, I'd really like to get the first uh, seed, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. But guys, I need your help. Thoughts in the comment section. I will, you know, obviously take everything into account. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one.